Hey guys, Abby here from Valerians by Night. Today, I want to do a little video about just overall dancing at home and a little bit different issue performing at home. Obviously this year, lots of places are doing their performances differently. Lots of companies are totally virtual. There's limited uh, performances going on. For me personally, I've had this dream for a long time of performing Sugar Plum, especially the variation, on stage. And it's something I've never gotten to do. I've taught Sugar Plum, you know, like I've danced it, I've done the variation pretty much my whole life, but I've never performed it. So this year, and this is something I've been planning on doing and wanting to do for years, and I've just never done it, but with everything being a little bit more unconventional this year, it's kind of like now's the right time. Like I'm not a professional anymore. I'm post-professional, but even the pros are, you know, doing more virtual things. So this is my shot. So the other day, uh, I decided to try and film Sugar Plum in, in my tutu and costume everything. And this is my spare bedroom that I dance in. It is tiny. It's this little bitty space. And so obviously to dance in this space takes some major adjustments. Not everything in the variation went, you know, completely perfectly trying to adjust for this space, but not everything goes perfectly in a stage performance either. I remember even as a pro, they always said, you know, as a pro, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make your worst day come across as your best day. So, you know, you're trying to get to that level where even what's, you know, not your best still looks good for an audience. So dancing in this room, you know, is challenging. It has its own difficulties. But what I wasn't expecting with it, you know, when you're dancing for a live audience, you have this huge audience connection. It's out of this world. And a lot of times it takes you to this other, like this other realm, this other place. And even the last few times I actually performed on a stage, I really like, I had been fighting to get that feeling. My confidence was not as high. And sometimes it just didn't feel the same. You know, and I remembered that feeling and I, just, I've been craving getting that feeling back. Dancing at home, you're taken to a different place. Like the relationship you have to your dancing becomes very different. When you're in a studio and you have a teacher and you have other dancers, you have a relationship to all these elements. You even have a relationship to the studio space itself. So here I have a relationship to the studio, but no relationship to a teacher, no relationship to other dancers. And I can't remember when it was, but a couple of years ago, I heard or saw a dancer talking about dancing for an audience of one, which is obviously God. And it kind of just struck me when I heard that because I realized quite a bit that I had been putting all this focus into these external factors. I've been putting huge focus into kind of having a fear of being compared to other dancers, a fear of not being what the teacher or the instructor wanted me to be, a fear of not giving the audience the performance that I wanted to give them. And when I heard that, I was kind of like, you know, my focus has been all wrong all this time because this is really about me and my relationship to myself and to God through this performance. People talk about the whirling dervish and you know they're the they do their dance that they spin and the whole reason that they do this is to kind of take themselves into kind of a, a trance, a different state. And I feel like we can do this with ballet. I feel like we can do this with performing but if you're too externally motivated, you might not necessarily get there. At least that was the mental block I was having. So I went to film this piece. I went to film Sugar Plum and I was 
trying to film just this little combo beforehand and nothing was going right. It was terrible. I was falling out of double pirouettes. Uh, I mean, just the whole thing. I wasn't, like I tried to film just this, what was supposed to be a simple combo compared to Sugar Plum. I filmed it all these times and I was getting so frustrated. So by the time I went to film Sugar Plum, I was like, this isn't gonna happen today. Like, I'm gonna put the tutu on, I'm gonna try, but I'm gonna treat it like a dress rehearsal. Whatever, throw my hands up in the air. And then I put the tutu on and I come in here into my little bitty space. And my first run through wasn't the one that I'm gonna post, but it was still um, better than I expected. And about halfway through, like I think I was just dancing kind of like deadpan. I was just like, oh, the steps, this is gonna be bad. And about halfway through, just like this switch went off. And I was like, wait a minute, like I'm perform, like I am performing right now. And I just started like really letting go. And I was like, hey, this is, this feels like I'm really performing. Like I'm getting that connection, I'm going to that other place. And I didn't even really think that that would happen at home in my spare bedroom. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this one more time. And I'm try and start with that mentality instead of <laughs> switching halfway through. And so the next run through was just this, uh, you know, really like, it, it felt like a legitimate performance and I didn't even think about the fact that I wasn't in front of an audience. And I also didn't think about the fact that like, I'm completely in front of a camera. I mean, there is that, or there are those thoughts where you kind of go, you know, everything's gone well so far, but if I screw up these later steps, then, you know, it's all gonna be for nothing. <laughs> and then you have to like pull yourself back in and go, no, I can't think about what's to come. I have to think about this moment right now. And I have, because if I don't think about the steps that I'm doing, I'm not even gonna get to the steps later on. And I had this total turnaround <laughs> and, uh, so it was just really, really fun, and it kind of gives me a whole lot of uh, hope for just continuing to perform in this manner. It might be virtually, uh, if that's what you want to call it, but the fact that it was as fulfilling to me as being out on a stage really just uh, spoke to me, and I wanted to share that with you, and I wanted to share my performance with you. I also want to let you know we have gotten such great feedback on all our Christmas content we put out, but especially the snow workout. Like, we got so many great comments on that. And I just want to let you guys know we hear you when you're asking for more of that. This year, we had actually been working on these videos like all through the month of November. We had them pretty much filmed early on, but we were just trying to, we we're trying to wait until, you know, like Christmas season to put them out. And so by the time we got a lot of that feedback, you know, things get really busy this time of year and we were kind of at our limit for what we can do. But for 2021, for the whole year, you know, we're not gonna wait for Christmas time. We're gonna keep trying to provide you with some really fun stuff. We have some great ideas. I still get tons of um, requests for videos and I, I promise I hear every single one. I try to fulfill them as much as I can. There have been one or two I've gotten recently that, I'm gonna, that are more technique issues that I really want to work on and address. So we hear you on that. And for right now, I would just like for you to view my sugar plum variation and I hope you enjoy. I hope everybody has a great rest of 2020 and a happy enter into 2021. Eat your black eyed peas on New Year's Day <laughs> and let's just see what is to come because I promise it's going to be some really great stuff. Bye! <laughs>
Thank you.